Hi there, this is HJ. In Unity 2023.2, a dedicated UI shader will be available in the shader graph. I briefly tested it in the beta version and would like to share the results in this video. There are relatively few restrictions on making and applying shaders in UGUI, if the game can afford them in the performance wise. However, it does not mean Unity's actively supported it. The UGUI is game object based. So by their very nature, applying shaders is easy and intuitive. It would be more correct to say that Unity doesn't pay that much attention if we see the integration between Shader Graph and UGUI. Some critical issues have remained untouched for several years, but better late than never. They finally announced that so-called Canvas Shader is available in the Shader Graph. First, I'll examine whether it resolves some chronic shader issues in UGUI. Then let's take a closer look at how this shader works and how it can be used. In order to test the Canvas Shader, I installed Unity 2023.2, beta version. The test scene consists of two scroll views. When an item is clicked, a blue square appears to indicate its selection. Let's assume a situation we have to apply a shader to the blue square. The two scroll views have different masking methods. The left one employs the mask component, and the other employs the rect mask 2D component. Since it's a URP project, I'll create a URP sprite unlit shader. This shader doesn't need to be complicated. A simple blinking one will suffice. Add a texture 2D property in the blackboard and connect it to a sampler. With sign time and an absolute node, an oscillating curve between 0 and 1 is made. Multiply the sampler's output by it. The blue square will look better if it's additively blended. Set the blending mode to additive. That's all for the test shader. Apply material to all the blue squares. The shader seems to work as intended. However, when you scroll, the blue squares are scrolled out of the window. They are no longer masked. It is the mask issue that has been bothering shader graph users for a long time. Sprite shaders made with the shader graph don't support stencil buffer, so that they aren't masked by the mask component. The right window shows the same symptom, but the cause is different. The rect mask 2D doesn't need stencil buffer, but a special keyword Unity UI clip rect in its shader code. Shader graph doesn't support it either in the sprite shaders. There is another well known issue. Go to the canvas and change its render mode to screen space overlay. The blue squares turn red and their alpha channel are not rendered properly. What upset many users is the fact that it was rendered correctly in the scene view. To resolve these problems, I have to fix the generated code. Once the fixed code is saved as a shader, it's no longer a shader graph shader and can't be reopened in the shader graph. Now it's time to experience the canvas shader. Duplicate the sprite shader. In the material type, select canvas. That's it. Apply the material to the blue squares. First, Examine the mask problem. Both the mask and rect mask 2D work fine. Next, check the overlay render mode issue. It also works fine. All the problems that had irritated users for years have gone. Let's take a closer look at the canvas shader. Two new scroll views have been prepared. The left one is with the sprite shader. The right one is with the canvas shader. Now let's take a closer look at the canvas shader on the right. I multiplied the main texture by tweaked sine curve. 
so its color goes back and forth between blue and black. Change the nodes to multiply the alpha value by the curve. Although it can get transparent, there is an obvious difference. The image underneath is visible through the blue square with the sprite shader. On the contrary, the blue square with the canvas shader is fully opaque. The sprite shader uses additive blending. What about the canvas shader? It doesn't have a field to set its blending mode. I guess I'll have to see the code to find out its blending type. In order to see the shader's code, select the shader and click the View Generated Shader button in the inspector. In the Property block, you can see several properties are declared to support the Mask and Rect Mask 2D. The sprite shader doesn't have such properties. There is line starting with Blend. It says 11 minus source alpha. If you're not familiar with shader languages, it sounds like some kind of password. There are several common blend types in Unity shaders. 11 minus source alpha is pre multiplied transparency. What about the sprite shader with additive blending? 11 is additive blending. The blend line determines which blend type the shader uses. I prepared a scene to examine blending types closely. I'll make two variants of the canvas shader. One is with the traditional alpha blending and the other is with additive blending. Change the blend line to source alpha 1 minus source alpha. Go to the top and change the shader's name. It's the name that you see in the materials shader drop down menu. Save the file with a proper name. One thing to note here is to append shader as a file extension, otherwise Unity can't recognize it as a shader. I'll make an additive variant. Change the blend line with 11. Save the file with a different shader name and file name. Drag the two shaders into the project window. The icon is different from those made in the shader graph. I mentioned that once the shader code is edited, it can't be reopened in the shader graph. They are no longer shader graph shaders. Create materials and apply them to each game object. Select all the materials and adjust their alpha value. The shader with additive blending looks identical to the additive sprite shader. The default canvas shader is similar to the shader with alpha blending. The former just looks slightly brighter. If you are a designer or artist, alpha and additive blending may be already familiar. Because the alpha blending is the default layer option in the Photoshop and the additive blending is same as the linear dodge. When we make UIs, there are things need to be represented as glowing. If the alpha blending is employed for the purpose, the resulting color is usually pale or dull rather than bright and vivid. That's why additive shaders are often used in UIs. So do we have to edit the shader code every time when we need additive blending? No, we don't have to. Before I explain how, we need to understanding pre-multiply blending. This is the pre-multiply blending equation. Let's see how it works with an example. There are two images, source and destination. Source is drawn over destination. Each has its own color and alpha. First, the source color is multiplied by 1. 1 is white so that the source color is unchanged. Next, the destination color is multiplied by 1 minus source alpha. 1 minus source alpha means each pixel's alpha value is subtracted from 1. Since alpha value is between 0 and 1, it inverts the source alpha. Now add the two images together. I'll change the source alpha from 1 to 0. Please look at the final image carefully. When the alpha is 1, it's fully opaque. But as alpha approaches 0, it behaves like additive blending. Pre-multiply is a sort of hybrid blending. But you can remember that when the alpha got near to 0, the blue square just faded in our example. Additive blending's characteristics didn't show up except that it was slightly brighter. The reason lies a little deeper. Open the generated code of the canvas shader. If we go down, there is a line starting with include. Follow the path and open the canvas pass file. This is where a pixel's color is actually calculated. 
At the bottom, this shader returns calculated color. Just above it, you can see the color is multiplied by its alpha. This line makes the image fade when we lower the alpha value. It also explains why the pre-multiply is slightly brighter than alpha blending. Let's check if my guess is correct. I copied the canvas pass file and saved it somewhere else. A custom shader is made from the default canvas shader. The only part I modified is the include line. The path now points the copied canvas pass file. In the pass file, I commented out the alpha multiplication. The material is assigned to the blue square at the center. When the alpha is 1, it's fully opaque. But as alpha approaches 0, it behaves like additive blending. It seems I was right. Then how can we make a glowing image with the default canvas shader? The answer is in the code. Go back to the canvas pass. You can find a line where its base color value is added to emission value. The canvas shader has a block node called emission. The color fed into the node is directly added to the base color. This means that the base color can be boosted to compensate for the fade out caused by the alpha. Let's do this. Create a color type property and connect it to the emission node. This node accepts high dynamic range value. Change the properties mode to HDR. Lower its alpha value so that its additive blending's characteristic stands out. In this state, increase the emission value. Because it's a HDR property, you can use value greater than 1. With the emission value added, we can make it look like those with additive shaders. If our shader uses a HDR color property, why don't we try a post-processing effects like Bloom? Add a global volume to the scene, add Bloom effect, and set its threshold and intensity. Of course, Bloom effects can cost performance. However, depending on the situation, it can be fully utilized and is worth it. Turn on the post-processing in the camera, which renders the UI. For reference, UI post-processing is not possible in screen space overlay render mode. Adjust the intensity. As you can see, realistic glowing effect is represented which can't be made with texture painting alone. As I mentioned, a pre-multiply shader is a hybrid. You can just use it as a regular alpha blending shader. Alternatively, it can be used as an additive shader using alpha and emission values. I think this is why Unity gave the canvas shader the sole pre-multiply blending instead of blending options. I will mention one final issue related to the UI, although it is not a shader issue. There are times when you want to animate material properties in the editor. The color in the image component is animated as usual. But properties in the material can't be animated. It's an issue related to the material property block. I was hoping this issue would be resolved as well, but unfortunately it wasn't. Anyway, it's better than nothing. In this video, I covered Unity's first dedicated UI shader. If there are any mistakes in the content, please point them out in the comments. In my channel, you can see other Unity UI works using shaders as well as other UI animation and effects works. Thank you for watching.